Hi, and welcome back to GUI Programming with Pi Simple GUI 2020. We're on part 12, Menus. This was a uh, viewer-requested lesson, so here is your requested lesson. Uh, menus I was going to get into with System Tray, but um, you'll see that they're used there as, as well, and it's a, the same sort of format. I thought it would be interesting to do a little compare and contrast between Tkinter and PySimple GUI for menus. I haven't done that through any of these lessons. It, it's sort of, I don't think that it's all that useful in a way uh, to, com to compare. Um, I don't know, it just feels funny to me to do that. But uh, for menus, what's uh, important, the difference is, uh, is that in PySimple GUI, menus are defined. And in this case, it's a data structure, a, a set of lists, just like a layout is defined using a set of lists. Whereas in Tkinter, uh, menus are built. And so are layouts in Windows, for that matter. They're not normally done with lists of lists the way PySimple GUI does it. So here, this t the Tkinter program takes a, a menu bar and it adds a menu item and adds a, a menu command and it connects up a callback function to that command and um, so it's it's done in code, right? Uh, if we run this thing, it actually creates two windows. There's a PySimple GUI window that's running here at the bottom. It's the same menu, believe it or not. It's uh, two lines of code. It could be one line of code, I suppose, instead of, I don't know, 14 or so, Tkinter. But it's, again, it's because there, in Tkinter, you're, you're adding each individual item and in PySimple GUI, you're specifying it using a data structure uh, list, which is a lot more convenient for the user, right? For you as a programmer, it's a whole lot easier to specify this list than it is to write all this code. And that's the whole concept behind PySimple GUI, in fact, right? It's a lot easier to, to write this layout as a list of elements than it is to write to Kinter code that goes and, and creates a similar layout programmatically. Okay, let's get into menu definitions. Uh, they are lists of lists if we're talking about a menu bar. Uh, so let me run this program. The f first thing here you'll see in the layout is a menu bar, and it has a menu def. Tear off, I'll show you in a moment. Across the top here is the menu bar. Here's the menu definition, and it's a list of lists. And each list corresponds to a menu item. So file, tool, file, edit, toolbar, and help. You see there's four lists, same sort of thing. Uh, when there is a, not a list embedded in one of in this one of these rows, it means that there's a submenu at that point. So, if you think about file, there'll be a, a menu under that. Uh, within edit, you see that there's a list embedded in the middle of this thing, and that means that there is a submenu under normal. So, if we go look at edit, you see normal. There is a submenu. And you can keep embedding as deep as you want to go. So, uh, and, uh, a few things to look at in this layout definition. Um, the ampersands that you see littered here are shortcuts. So, if you hit the Alt key on Windows, you'll see these little underlines show up. And wherever there's an ampersand in front of a character is where you'll see the underline showing up in the, the menus. So here I, I did Alt-F, it pulled open the file menu, and you'll see that there's underlines here as well. Uh, open, save, properties, exit, there's one uh, under the X. So let's take a look at that. You'll see E ampersand X. So I can do Alt F X, and that exits the program. In fact, uh, 
Uh, an, an, another thing you'll see in here is dashes. And dashes, three dashes means put a separator. And the way separators look is a, it's just a line. So here between command two and three, you see this line, that's a separator. And you just it's just three dashes. Um, and I think that's it in terms of the layout itself. Um, there, if, if you look at the other types of menus, they are the button menu and a right click menu. And each one of those types of menus is a single uh, item. So where a menu bar is several menus, say four menus in a way, a right click menu is a single menu. You get just one list, a, a button, menu is a single menu and the way those are specified is instead of a list of lists it's just a list and in fact the way it's designed you can take one of these lists that would go normally under a menu bar and make it a right click menu so I've just taken this edit one I've put in this variable called input right click and down here on my input element there is a parameter called right click menu and you'll find that on pretty much almost all elements have a right click menu item so when we run this code if I right click on the input element um, then you will see the same menu as what is under edit so you see it's got this cascaded normal same thing here I copied this definition down that's why um, you'll see this same format even though this edit here uh, I usually type in unused because it's not actually uh, used uh, it's just sort of a placeholder because that's how the data structure works what's uh, important uh, is the the menu portion after that that's what's actually shown now the way you get events from menus are the menu item you click is returned to you as the event the text is so uh, if I clicked on properties the event that comes back is properties and you see there here it prints event and values this is an output element so this is the event I printed the, the event out so you see that it says properties it does not include the ampersand so if I did file um, or edit special see special shows up but not the ampersand oh, so a, a question may come to mind of well, what if I want to have the same um, menu item text repeated in two places how can you tell the difference between edit undo and say toolbar undo and the answer to that is you use menu keys and a menu key is a menu item with colon colon followed by the, whatever you want to call your key so it's it's a text string and instead of getting the just the text you'll get this whole string back so it's not just the key its properties and the key it'll be this whole thing so let's do um, actually this is a let's do this one command one and it's command key so toolbar command one and the text that came back from the event is command one colon colon command underscore key which is what is right here right so if you are going to need to duplicate the, the way to make it unique is to add this key onto it uh, bu button menus are the exact same as a right click menu same format it's just they show up here when you click the button whereas a right click menu shows up wherever you right click and um, you can set right click menus at the window level so here you see on window it says right click menu is this one so if I click on this text 
it says right click menu exit properties right and that is what is set for the whole window whereas input has its own and that we've already shown to be the same as the edit menu up here now um, you won't get right click menus on multi-line elements like an output element because they're usually um, I think windows defined or something but so right clicking on that doesn't bring up the uh, right click menu uh, and the last thing I wanted to talk about here is another special character in the layout and that is an exclamation point if you see an exclamation point in front of an item it means it's disabled so you'll see one here where it says file you see disabled there it is grayed out you can't click it and the right click menu has one as well where click is disabled and um, you it, for the right click menu the ampersands you don't have to hold the alt key to get to them if I right click and I press the key that corresponds to the ampersand it will select that uh, item so in this case if I hit X it'll exit because that's what ampersand is for there uh, and the last not last next to the last there's two more things uh, button menus are special because they are buttons they come back the event comes back as the key for the button the way to get what item was chosen is to look in the values um, that comes back from your window read so if I choose button menu menu then I get the key for the event that is the button menu key in B menu and then the values dictionary is printed out here the key that corresponds to the to this button menu its value is menu which is what I chose from the list and then the final thing I wanted to cover is when you specify menus with tkinter you can turn on this special thing called tear off which is a really cool feature I've not seen this before anywhere else it gives you this little line here if you click on it it makes a floating window that you can then use so and you can do that with any of these and all of them they'll, they'll stay active you can click on them so they're like little floating toolbars in a way um, I, I kind of like them. It's a it's a really the time unique is feature. Six o'clock. It's a, a really unique feature, um, and um, I haven't seen people use it very often. Uh, that's it for menus. We will visit them again briefly when we talk about the system tray object. Um, thank you for watching.